Hey, what's up, people? Rick here. Let me tell you why I created this channel. This channel was created specifically for um, learning about the old 8-bit computers, uh, such as the Atari 8-bit line of computers, the 400, the 800, the 800 XL, the 65 XC, the 130 XC. Uh, we've also got the Commodore line of computers, the VIC-20, the Commodore 64, um, also the Apple, the Apple II, the Apple IIc. These were all designed around an 8-bit processor, the 6502 processor. Um, and it's the technology that I grew up on in my teens. Um, we're talking back 1984, 1985. Uh, when I first learned about computers, uh, I learned an Atari 800. At the high school I was going to, they had them in the library. They also had the Apple IIs there. So um, I kind of cut my teeth and got my experience uh, watching people in there using those computers and it piqued my interest. You know, they were playing games, they were on bulletin boards, they were doing all kinds of cool stuff. So um, it's been probably 30 years since, uh, 30 years? Yeah, it's probably 30 years since I put my hands on uh, any type of 8-bit computer. I've used emula emulators before on modern PCs, but I haven't actually had uh, an 8-bit computer, you know, owned one and actually used the actual hardware itself. So that's what I want to do in this series of videos that I'm going to be creating. Um, I've acquired some 8-bit hardware. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a 130XE that I purchased that arrived just yesterday. Um, I haven't unboxed it yet, so we're going to do that together. Um, I'm looking to get all the accessories for it as well. Um, I'm probably going to start the series off focusing on the Atari because that's what I grew up with. That's what I know the best, or it's what I knew the best at the time. I'm going to be quite rusty, to be honest with you. I haven't used one, in, like I said, in 30 years. So um, I kind of want to take you guys through... You know, the hardware, <clears throat> the history of the computer. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, things like connecting the peripherals, loading up the, the, the DOS, uh, what was called back in the day, the disk operating system. We didn't have Windows. We had DOS. Um, as a matter of fact, you could turn on the 8-bit computers, and instantly you would be in BASIC. You know, the BASIC was a ROM that was built inside into the computer. Um, <clears throat> there was no boot up time like we experience today with Windows and with Mac and with Linux. You turn the computer on, it was on, it was ready to go. Um, there were cassette drives where you could load programs from cassettes, which, which is, was extremely slow. Um, then they had disk drives available for some of the computers. Um, that was much better. And then they had all kinds of enhancements to the disk drives, which would allow the disk drive to read and write, you know, double speed, triple speed, quadruple speed. Um, and this is kind of where I want to go with this series of videos. I want to take you through the basics, the stock computer, um, and then we're going to get into um, some of the enhancements, <clears throat> excuse me, some enhancements for the computers, like I said. I know for, for myself, using the Atari line of computers, um, I can remember back in the day, modifications to the, the 1050 disk drive. They called it a happy, a happy enhancement, I think is what it was called. It was a happy chip. Um, <clears throat> it was a chip that allowed the, the, the disk drive to read and write you know, much faster than the standard, you know, stock ROM, I guess, that was on the disk drive. Um, it also allowed you to pirate or copy protected disks or games, which was also a, a big thing for us, obviously. Um, then we can also get into some things where SIO to PC, which is an, a, a device that allows you to connect a SD card to the Atari computer and allows you to access your programs, your games, your DOS programs, your disk images um, from a modern SD drive versus having to load the old-fashioned way with uh, five and a quarter floppy inch disks or tape drives for that matter. So we're going to get into that as well. Um, we're going to get into some programming, okay? Um, I did a lot of programming on the Atari. Uh, I wrote one of my first commercial programs on an Atari 800XL and as a matter of fact, I believe, I believe right here on the bookshelf, I have. <laughs> uh, I didn't stage this. I actually found this a couple weeks ago when I was thinking about doing this. Um, I actually have. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if the camera will autofocus well enough on this. But this is actually a basic printout, a printout of a basic program that I wrote. And it's multiple pages. You can see that the paper's yellowed. Okay. I mean, it's. I've had this for a long, long time. Um, but this is actually... <laughs> Printed out on a dot matrix printer, um, line by line. This was a program I wrote for a gentleman, um, a good friend of mine. His uh, father was a uh, eyeglass salesman, 
sunglass, prescription sunglass salesman in the flea market down here in North Miami Beach, Florida. And this program basically allowed him to, it was a database program, it allowed him to track his customers. And um, I believe what it did was it tracked the, the spherical, cylindrical, axis, prism, and base numbers so that when they would come in and say, hey, I need a new pair of sunglasses, and he would be able to use this program to look up their prescription, uh, the numbers that would use to cut the lenses or to, to form the lenses properly, you know, the screen would, would get drawn out with the, uh, the special characters on the keyboard, and it would kind of make a little uh, menu system where he could select the, the customer and the phone number, the address, the doctor's name, the doctor's phone number, the prescription, and then the date of birth. So... Uh, I'd actually like to type this in at some point. Let's type this in in basic and see if it still runs 30 years later. Hmm. That'd be quite interesting, I think. And also, speaking of programming, I have another surprise here. You can see that. Basic Atari Basic. This book written by James S. Cohn and Richard Kushner, okay? This is the, an original book that I bought, I have to say back in 1985, 1986, somewhere around that time. I mean, you can see this book is really, really old. It's kind of yellowed. But it stands the test of time. It's actually all there and it's all together and it tells you basically how to program the Atari computer in basic. Look here. Look at that, kids. Birdine's tag. Those of you old enough to remember the Birdine's department store. Wow. A little cookie inside the pages there. I wonder what else is in there. Oh. Blank piece of paper. No secret messages on that. Anyway, so uh, we're going to get into some basic programming on the Atari 8 bit computers. And uh, along with that, I also have. See if we get this to focus. There we go. Assembler editor. Hmm. For those of you who don't know what that is, this is an editor slash debugger slash assembler that allows you to write programs on the Atari in assembly language. I think it'd be kind of cool to get into this as well. This is where you derive the power. This is where you can write programs and subroutines that get you speed. And then you can incorporate those subroutines into your basic program and really make the basic program run a lot faster. So I did some of this when I was a kid. I don't remember how to use this cartridge, but we're going to get back into it. We're going to figure it out and we're going to get into it. All right. So 8-bit Atari. Um, like I said, I'm collecting the hardware as time goes on. I've got a 130AXC. I'm going to go grab it in a second. Here. We're going to unbox it and take a look at it. I'm going to show you what a 130AXC looks like in person. Well, I'm in person, but you're going to see it on camera. Um, and then we're going to connect it up. Hopefully it works. I have no idea if it works. Like I said, I bought it from a guy on eBay the other day. It just got here. Um, and then we'll slowly build up some peripherals and hardware around it. And we'll go through how to operate it, how to look at the internals of it, how to upgrade it. Um, we'll get into some disks if I can find a disk drive. Um, and uh, we're going to take it from there. So let me go get the computer. We'll unbox it. We'll talk a little bit about it. We'll be right back. All right, so here we go. Here is our package from eBay. Let's go and crack it open. See what we got. I believe this should have the computer, probably the original power supply, I would guess. Um, probably nothing else, though. So get rid of that paper. Let's get rid of this. Oh, here we go. Make sure there's nothing else in the box. And pretty much like he said, just the computer. Here we go. This, my friends, is an Atari 130XE. Got a little tape on it. It's not in too bad a condition. It's a little dirty. Um, a little yellowed on the keys, but um, not in too bad a shape, I don't think. So you can see here on the back, let me just talk to you real briefly about some of the 
some of the ports and the buttons back here. So we got a power button right here. And it feels a little spongy actually. <laughs> Not a good sign. Um, this is the power cable, uh, the DIN. This guy right here is a, an RCA connection that was used to connect these uh, computers to the television. Um, originally when these computers came out, the Atari 804, and you would connect them to the uh, television through an RF modulator. You'd put the TV on channel 3 or 4, and um, basically that was the way you would view um, your output. Um, and you can see here the channel selector um, 2 and 3. So you would pick the channel, connect your RF modulator or your cable from here back to the back of the TV. The RF modulator would connect to the antenna um, on the back of your TV, and that's how that would work. Um, this computer, the 130EXE, actually has a monitor port. Um, this is the one we're going to go for. Um, I ordered a cable that actually allows us to connect this to composite in on a monitor or a TV that has a composite in, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, expansion port, cartridge port. Um, this is where you would normally plug in your games or your, um, for example, this is a Pac-Man game cartridge. And to play that game, you would basically put that guy right there, turn the computer on, bingo. In a matter of seconds, you'd be playing Pac-Man. There's no delay time. There's no boot up time. There's nothing. It's almost instantaneous. Um, as far as the expansion port, I believe this port here gave um, hardware manufacturers direct access to the computer's bus. So through this expansion port, I'm pretty sure that they were able to do uh, memory upgrades and um, other types of... Uh, um, accessories that gave you direct access to the, the bus on the computer, which is kind of nice. And over here, uh, this was the, called the peripheral port. Um, basically, this is like a, a serial port. Um, and what you would do is you would connect the first device here, like say a disk drive. And then on the back of the disk drive, there'd be two ports, one to connect this to the disk drive. And then the second port on the disk drive would allow you to daisy chain to the next device, for example, a modem or a printer. So basically, from the computer, you'd come out to your first device, from that device to the second device, and so on. Um, almost like in a, it's, it's a daisy chain uh, fashion, which is kind of nice, you know, just one device after the other. Um, on this side of the computer, we've got two joystick ports. Uh, these are basically the game controllers for playing games. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, on the, along the top of the keyboard here, we've got a help button, a start button, a select button, an option button, and a reset button and these did various functions. Um, you'd be able to access certain things by pressing those buttons at boot up, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So, uh, pretty nice uh, little cooling fins up here. Not really sure if this has any fans, and I don't believe it does, but I guess that just allows fresh air to get in there. So, pretty cool. Well, I can't wait to actually use this thing. So, let me uh, get back into the uh, normal view here, and we'll talk a little bit more about what we're going to do. But yeah, there you go, 130 XE. Um, I'm going to uh, get cables and everything set up for it, and then in the next video, we'll connect this thing up to a monitor, and we'll see it actually work. There we go, guys. 130 XE, ready to go. Next time I see you, we're going to be connecting this computer, and we're going to see if it works and get into a little bit of the basics of how to operate it, all right? Please subscribe, comment below with any questions or comments or suggestions, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.